Greetings all, this is Nick of the Extra Hairy Variety, back again to talk about Star Wars Legion because we just got a lot of really cool, really hype news about this game. Yes, Adepticon currently on over in Illinois in the US of A. FFG had a major panel there talking about X-Wing Legion and Armada. Um, nothing really exciting for X-Wing and Armada. In fact, nothing new announced for X-Wing made me kind of sad. Armada got a new campaign pack. That looks really cool. Look, honestly, I don't really um, cover Armada on my YouTube channels, but if you want to check that out, check out Crabox video on that one. But in the world of Star Wars Legion, we have a lot of really cool stuff to talk about um, that is potentially going to inject a lot of renewed interest into the game. Indeed, that's the impression I'm getting based on people people's reaction on social media, on YouTube and all that kind of stuff, because we now have the Clone Wars entering into the game, something that resonates with a lot of people. And I think out of every game that FFG make for Star Wars, this is the most appropriate in terms of adding in Clone Wars content. Look, I love that it's been added into X-Wing. Um, it worked really well with the release of second edition and all that kind of stuff. But when I think Clone Wars, I think sort of that kind of really en masse war style, ground battle, Star Wars Legion style things, lots of clone troopers and battle droids just mushing into each other and just lasers everywhere. That is really what the Clone Wars, that, that's the impression I get. That's what really resonates with me from those movies and the cartoons and all that kind of stuff. So really happy to see we finally got an announcement on this and we can actually talk about all the new stuff. But before we do, first up, a huge shout out to the guys over at Gold Squadron Podcast for streaming the Adepticon panel for FFG. Uh, also, Fifth Trooper as well for doing that, and also covering the Legion event at Adepticon. Really appreciate the work these guys do um, to get all this stuff covered. FFG didn't do an official stream themselves. Don't really understand why they wouldn't, but at least we do have someone covering this and doing a fantastic job. So massive shout out to those guys. Another quick announcement uh, in the game of Legion FFG made was this expansion here, an upgrade card pack. Yes, 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 FFG. Um, this is a great consumer-friendly product. Really happy to see this. I'm really wishing we had stuff like this previously, especially in uh, X-Wing 1st Edition, because what this is is essentially a pack of the generic upgrade cards for Legion, um, and you get just a whole heap of them. This is really, really handy, um, especially in Legion. In fact, out of all the games they make, I think this is the most needed in Legion, um, especially with some of these, you only get like one ofs or two ofs in certain packs, and you might need quite a few copies in order to use on a large army. Um, considering the cost of this pack is only $10 US, um, given the cost of Legion as a whole, not having to buy like your $25, $40 unit just to get access to a card, yes, really, really good. Uh, also, in the Q&A after FFG's presentation, they did hint at that this would be something they would consider in other games. Um, I mentioned before X-Wing 1st Edition, the reason I'm not so concerned about this in 2nd Edition is because, well, just about all of us have conversion kits and squad packs, which basically serve the same purpose. Having said that, there is a, still a few outliers in X-Wing 2nd Edition, uh, the unique crew that were only included in some conversion kits, like Triple Zero, BT-1, um, the spare parts canister only available in the Republic squad pack. Uh, that was kind of frustrating, so look, uh, maybe it will get to a stage in X-Wing 2nd Edition where this kind of thing is needed, but Legion right now is absolutely at that point. I remember when Veers uh, was fully spoiled, I actually got my own copy of General Veers in hand. The environmental gear card, the only way to get this as a one-of was in the Veers pack at that time. And I said at the time, hey, if this is a card that is like meta-defining, kind of sucks getting a lot of copies of this. So uh, yeah, that's just one example. Having all of these options is fantastic. Plus, if we take a look at all of the cards we get in the pack, there are 60 in total. Um, you can see that there are a few cards here which are actually part of the first lot of Clone Wars content. We can see here from the Clone Wars content, just a little bit that was teased, aggressive tactics. 
uh, Force Guidance and Electro Binoculars are all coming in the Clone Wars core set. So for us players playing uh, Imperial and Rebel, we don't have to buy that in order to get cards. Indeed, that was another thing that Alex Davies said. Yes, you do not have to buy this core set. Um, if you're an existing player, if you're uh, invested in the OT factions, um, you don't have to buy anything out of these, which is really good, uh, really good for the health of the game, a really encouraging thing for new players. I'm very happy to see that. Um, and yeah, just hope more of this to come. And, and please, FFG, put it in your other games. This is really, really good, really good. Very happy to see this. Okay, let's move over to the thing which most people are the most hyped about, the Clone Wars core set. Uh, once again, we have the box art with the villain with a very awesome badass pose just charging down the good guys. Once again, I think FFG, um, it, it's a very formulaic way of approaching the art, but uh, I don't care. It looks awesome. General Grievous and Obi-Wan Kenobi are the commanders in this pack. I think that is a great option for the first guys uh, to include main characters. Um, a lot of people were thinking, oh, maybe Dooku or Mace Windu or something like that. I think Obi-Wan and Grievous is absolutely the right call. Also, before we move on from this, the box art here does potentially give us a few clues as to some units that we might be expecting. We already have these Phase 1 uh, Clone Troopers, uh, Battle Droids, General Grievous. What we don't have so far are these Super Battle Droids. I'd absolutely wager that they're going to be added into the game at some point. Also, if we look in the back here, we can see the Trade Federation tanks. Um, what I'm not so sure about is the spider droids and the LAAT gunships. I think both of these would be awesome in the game, but they are enormous. Um, given the cost of units in this game, whew, that could really hurt the wallet. Um, nevertheless, I think both of them would be fantastic if there was a way to realistically get them in the game. And apart from this, in terms of future releases, uh, Alex Davey did mention, yes, we are working on all the named characters, making sure we get all those cool, iconic characters into the game. That was another thing he revealed in the Q&A, but I think we can pretty much expect that with Clone Wars. It's all about those cool Jedi, uh, Count Dooku, Palpatine, Yoda, Mace Windu, Plo Koon, all the Jedi Council, uh, Rex and Cody and all these guys. Yeah, yeah. Really looking forward to all of this. Got some pretty cool art. Uh, FFG set up a Geonosis display for this photo shoot. And we got some nice shots of the stuff we can expect in the core set. But let's talk about these models for just a second because... In the core set, we have a bunch of battle droids, a bunch of phase one clone troopers. We'll talk about those a bit more in a second because we actually got some stats for those. Droid to cars, um, a clone speeder bike, General Grievous and Obi-Wan. Now, uh, let's actually talk about these models because we had another big thing revealed from the Adepticon panel. FFG are majorly updating the materials they use. They're moving away from soft plastic and going to hard plastic sprues. And I think what I want to address here first, actually, based on a lot of the comments I get whenever I talk about Legion, people are a little bit put off by this game because of the fact it is so hobby-centric. And I just want to encourage people that say that um, it is honestly the most realistic way to approach a game like this. Uh, I think conservatively, if these were all going to come pre-painted to a good tabletop standard, we would have to expect them to at least be twice the price that they are. This is really a part of the game. Um, honestly, if you are massively put off by the hobby part of it, I really think uh, you should be looking more at games like X-Wing and Armada. It is a pretty hard sell if you're not into that part of this hobby, and that's unfortunately just a reality. I understand there is a desire to play this game if you're not part of the hobby. Unfortunately, that just comes hand in hand with how this generally goes. And yes, cutting things off a plastic sprue does add a bit more in the construction of these models, but don't worry guys, there are lots of really good tutorials on how to do this on the internet. Um, if you want to have a look at like Sir Rastro's painting videos and all that kind of stuff, the information is all out there. And I do encourage anyone that hasn't gotten to this part of the game, uh, to the hobby side of things, to give it a go. Because I've been building models for most of my life and I really enjoy the hobby. In any case, yes, hard plastic. This is really, really good. 
Now, uh, when Legion was first released, uh, it came in at uh, what is considerably a lower price point than something like the GW Minis, which uh, do use hard plastic sprues. And honestly, for the price point we've always had Legion at, I've been pretty happy with uh, the kind of quality of minis we've been getting. However, it must be pointed out that yes, soft plastic does come with a bit of a downside. I actually have uh, some Imperial Guard that I'm going to open up right now just to show off that point. I'll just get the camera to focus on it. Yep, yeah, that should be good. Yeah, you can see that staff is, is quite bent. And look, um, it's not too difficult to get around. You can just put it in hot water and reset it and try to fiddle around with it, but it's annoying. It's definitely annoying, and it's definitely something that I would like to uh, do without. Also, um, just get that back in focus again. Oh, where is it? It's around about there. Um, a lot of the helmets on these have very big, gross seam lines. Actually, this one's not too bad, particularly on like on the um, fine helmets, uh, the smooth helmets of the Stormtroopers. That big, disgusting mold line is a pain. I'm really not a fan of the fact that we have to deal with that kind of stuff. Hopefully with hard plastic sprues, some of these problems should start to be alleviated because it's a much more fine, a much more accurate way of manufacturing these models. So really looking forward to see what they can do with that. In fact, in the presentation at Adepticon, we already saw um, the sprues for General Grievous, all the different poses we can get him into. He has um, lots of different detachable arms, two lightsabers, four lightsabers, lightsaber gun, uh, an optional cloak as well. That's really cool. Um, I like the amount of personality you can put into your version of the General Grievous model. Doesn't seem to have those options with Obi-Wan. He seems to be doing his iconic uh, sort of lightsaber over the shoulder stance or whatever you call that. Like in episode three on Uta Power where he takes on General Grievous for the last time. Um, yeah, really cool looking mini nonetheless. I don't really think it needs to have different poses. He's wearing his Clone Wars armor that he had in the TV show, which is a nice include. I think we can pretty much expect to see things from the TV show in this. Um, in terms of adding to the lore and everything, it's something they pretty much can't ignore. And yes, apart from that, we have a collection of all these command cards. Uh, oh yes, for the generic command cards, we have new art, which is really nice to see. Uh, can't see what any of the Obi-Wan or Grievous command cards say just yet, but they have indicated there will be a separate article for that, which is cool. Doesn't seem to be much in the way of unique upgrades, um, apart from those ones which will be included in the upgrade pack. Uh, all the regular tokens, the environment and battlefield cards will all be the same as you get in the original core set. They did make a point during the presentation, um, really hammered the point home. No, this is not something you have to buy to access certain things. It's a very much a vanilla pack. It's more about just getting your foot in the door with these new factions. And given that it's only $10 more than the old core set, that's pretty much because I'm guessing there's more battle droids than like rebel troopers or storm troopers. And that Grievous model I imagine comes with a bit of a manufacturing cost. I think that all makes perfect sense. Really love the look of this core. I think it's going to be awesome. Okay, let's move along because we have two more things to quickly talk about. These expansion packs for the phase one clone troopers and the B1 battle droids. These are the same units you get in the core set. But thanks to this article here, we do have a few more stats, which is really, really handy. And this helps highlight something else that Alex David was saying. When they were designing the Rebels and the Empire, they wanted to make them very similar. Uh, Empire, a bit more aggression driven. Uh, Rebels, a bit more defensive driven. But all in all, uh, most of the units sort of mirror each other. Uh, on the Republican Separatists, they actually wanted to make them more diametrically opposed. Uh, the Separatists are the dedicated swarm faction, and the Republic have more powerful units in general with the clone troopers, Jedi, and all that kind of stuff. And you can see that right here with the clone trooper card. It is the most powerful sort of core unit in the game. It is also the most expensive, a full six points more than a Stormtrooper unit. Otherwise, pretty much all the same stats. Uh, we don't have any surges. It does attack with black dice, which is really, really cool. But we got a really, really cool keyword here with fire support. When another friendly unit performs an attack, if you have a face-up order token, each mini in your unit may add an eligible weapon to that attack pool. If you do, flip your order token face down. Limit one fire support for attack pool. Uh, so basically you get to 
uh, perform your attack simultaneously, meaning you're almost uh, jumping the gun with your activation. It means that this unit can't, you know, take tokens or move or anything like that. But sometimes you just want them to stay still and shoot something a whole bunch, uh, which this can do. Now, of course, this does raise the question, what kind of heavy troopers does it have? We can see a little bit of information here. There is some kind of grenade launcher and some kind of minigun. Looks like that grenade launcher is going to have some kind of use against vehicles, but I hesitate to um, sort of celebrate so much over fire support until we get a bit more information on that. If that's nice and efficient, um, this is going to be really, really good at hammering vehicles might be a really good answer for like your core units to take on things like ATSTs which would be yeah really really cool like the look of these basically it's a vanilla core unit with one of the most powerful keywords in the game um, at least that's my interpretation of it right now looks really really solid okay as opposed to the battle droids which by the way costs the same as all the other core units in the game right now but you get nine minis in this pack um, I do appreciate the fact that FFG have found a way to get better quality plastics, but haven't upped the price on these core units. That's a very good sign. But they are dirt cheap. Um, Alex Davies did say, um, yes, they are terrible. That's kind of the point, though. For 36 points, you get a troop of six of them. They only cost six points each. Um, you can field next one for six points, as you can with all other core units. Um, they don't have any tech slots. Oh well, whatever. They defend with white dice, uh, one wound per unit, uh, one courage, no surge, moves at speed two, attacks, uh, melee, and range with white dice. It's not great, you guys. And it's not uh, much better looking at these keywords. AI attack. Unless you have a face-up order token, your first action must be an attack if able, which is certainly a big drawback. Um, if you want to move and shoot, well, tough. You can't. You have to shoot first if you're able to. Now, you might not have any enemies within range 1 to 3 and you can sort of circumnavigate that but the whole idea of the droids is to be able to get face-up order tokens, which relates to this second keyword here. Coordinate droid trooper. After you are issued an order, you may issue an order to a friendly droid trooper unit at range 1. Which means you only need to issue an order to uh, one droid trooper unit within a cluster of droid trooper units and they essentially all get orders at the same time. Which is very good and very important because otherwise their actions are hampered by their first keyword. But you're giving them all face-up order tokens, that's going to give you better control during your turn. It does mean fielding a whole heap of these, <laughs> but they're dirt cheap. So, um, yeah, that's really, that's really, really interesting. I, I like the look of these guys. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to field them. Yeah, they're, they're going to pop, but you're going to have a lot of redundant droids. It's going to suck when uh, your opponent really pressures you and forces these guys to separate and their activation is just trash because they have no control of what they can do. Yeah, that's not ideal, I understand, but that's not the point. This is a dedicated swarm faction and you can see how they've made it cheap enough to swarm and they've given you serious upside for doing so. Looks really, really cool. Again, I'm not going to speculate too much on these upgrade cards. We'll see more of those when those articles come out. Uh, in the meantime, that's all the stuff we have for this particular chunk of releases for Star Wars Legion. I'm really, really hyped for all this. Even though I'm an Empire player myself, I don't mind having a nice few months where I don't get any more releases on my faction because I'm still working on all my unbuilt models and stuff. So it's probably a good thing. Gives us all a chance to catch up. FFG are pretty much confirmed. Yeah, they're going to focus on this for a little while so they can get it up to speed with all the other factions. But it'll be really cool when we get to a state in the game where basically all the factions are at equilibrium and we're getting like lots of different expansions for all the different factions. We get a lot of color added to the game. This stuff looks awesome. It looks like the groundswell of support for this is really, really positive. Um, hopefully this injects a lot more interest into the game. I think it really needs it right now. Hopefully we see a lot of new players. I'm really excited to play against all of this stuff. I think it adds a lot of interest to the game. And yeah, just super happy with all of this. Anyway, guys, stay tuned. As more Legion information comes out, I will cover it. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe. Like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Reddit. Please consider supporting my Patreon. Thank you to all of my existing patrons. And I will catch you guys in the next video.